Hey guys, Logan here from The Spalty Dog. So today, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this DIY industrial media console using two by eights, three quarter inch black pipe, and some three eighth inch round rod that you can pick up at your local home center. Now, if this is something you're interested in, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. This console is made entirely of standard two by eights that you can pick up from your local big box store. So to start off, I cut all my pieces to rough length over at the miter saw. Rather than cutting all at once, I take a shallow first pass and then follow up with a through cut. This helps prevent chip out along the face of the board and leaves a smooth edge. With all my pieces cut, I then move over to the joiner to flatten one face. It's important to feed the boards through with just enough pressure to keep it moving forward. If too much is applied, you risk adding a potential bow to the board. Once I get the board established on the outfeed table, I maintain pressure on that end while walking along the board with my push blocks. After flattening one face on each board, I move to the planer to make the opposite face parallel. So far, I've only removed enough material on both faces to expose new fibers. I wanted to give these boards time to release any internal stresses after milling, so I've stickered the boards and I'm going to let them sit for a few more days. Off camera, I had milled the boards to their final dimension and glued up all the panels for the console. I then came back with a chisel along with a hand plane to remove any glue squeeze out and to smooth the joints between each board. I had originally planned to have the console assembled with reinforced miters. So I set my track saw to 45 degrees and trimmed the panels to their final length. With all the panels cut to final length, I mark and lay out the stop dados for the shelf that will run the length of the console. To make sure the dado is the right size, I use a scrap piece of material that's the same thickness as the shelf. Using a speed square, I'll mark where I want the dado to stop while referencing the front edge of the panel. To remove the material, I pulled out my plunge router and freehanded the dado in multiple passes. Since I'm not using a guide, I made sure not to get too close to my lines. I square up the end of the dado using a chisel and then sand to my lines using a piece of scrap as a guide. With the dados completed, I move to marking the dowel locations for the top and bottom of the console. I mark a line one inch from each side using a speed square to show where I want the first and last dowel. Now that I know my start and end points, I can use this tool to help evenly space the other dowels from one another. You simply line up the first and last marker with your lines, then twist the knobs to lock it in place. I then come back with my pencil to mark the other dowel locations. At this point, we're ready to start the dry assembly. You're probably wondering, what happened to my miters? The original plan was to use miter joints reinforced with dowels. However, as I started the dry assembly, I found my panels had cut. So for the sake of moving forward, I switched over to butt joints. I'll briefly discuss why I did this at the end of the video. Here, I'm adding these right angle guides to hold the sides perpendicular to the top. This is really just temporary, so I can set the top on without having the sides fall over. With the top in place, I attach some additional right angle guides to make sure the top is perpendicular with the sides. I wanted to make sure the sides were flush with the ends of the top, so I used some scrap material and applied a great amount of clamping pressure to help prevent movement. Again, I mentioned these panels had some cup to them, so to correct this, I used a few pipe clamps and some scrap resting over the cup. When applying pressure, this would pull the center of the panels in flush while the right angle guides would keep the ends in place. With everything aligned, I punch and drill holes in each dowel location. However, at this point, I'm only drilling holes to fit a screw as the dowels will be added later on. After repeating these steps for the bottom, clamps are removed to apply glue to the joints, then are re-added to hold everything while it dries. Additionally, decking screws are added temporarily to help reinforce the joint. While the cabinet is drying, I move over to cutting the shelf to length at the miter saw. At full capacity, I lift the shelf slightly to cut a little bit further. 
but in this case the shelf is still too large so I had to flip it and take a second pass. If you're not comfortable with this, that's perfectly fine. You can trim any leftover pieces with a handsaw. With the shelf cut to length, I mark out the corners I need to remove since it will be in a stop dado. To remove these pieces, I simply used my Japanese pull saw while staying away from the line which was then finessed with a chisel. I applied glue to the dados as well as the shelf ends. I then used a mallet and a scrap 2x4 to put it in place. This was a pretty tight fit, and looking back now, I could have made it a little more loose and saved myself a lot of pounding. With the shelf in place and the glue dried, I can slide in the dividers. These are just held in place with glue and are kept aligned using a couple of right angle guides. Again, with this being all construction lumber, there were a few pretty big knots on some of the boards. To help stabilize this, I filled each knot with epoxy and left it for 24 hours to cure. I set the cabinet aside and started working on the base. First, by cutting and threading all the pipe to length, using an angle grinder, cutoff wheel, and pipe threader. As a reminder, some big box stores will cut and thread pipe for you at no additional charge, and this can save a ton of time. However, I found that there are some things that will always need finessed during assembly. After all the pipe is cut, I start assembling each leg for the base. I tighten everything by hand, then go back with pipe wrenches to finish it off. Once two of the legs are assembled, they are then joined with a connecting pipe. With the shape of these legs, it's easy to tighten their connection by holding one in place while twisting the other. After getting all of the legs assembled, they are joined one more time with two pipes that extend the length of the console. Similar to my industrial desk build, I thread the pipe all the way into one end, then place the other leg in position and loosen the connecting pipe. This causes the pipe to remove partially from one fitting and into the other. Next I clean the pipe from all oil and residue to prep for paint. With a clean base, I first apply a few light coats of a self-etching primer, followed up with a few coats of a flat black enamel, then finally finished off with a satin clear. While the base dries, I jump back over to sand the cabinet up to 220 grit. Next, I remove all the screws from the cabinet and drill out larger holes for the dowels. I then mix up a 5 minute epoxy to secure the dowels. I didn't want to use regular wood dowels for this and thought, why not use steel? So I took some leftover 3 8 inch round rod from my plywood coffee table build and used that instead. After applying the epoxy to the bottom half of each dowel, I pounded each in place with a mallet, making sure to go back and remove any excess epoxy. Once the epoxy had set, I came back with my angle grinder and a flap disc to grind the dowels flush with the cabinet. Then I sanded the whole piece again at 320 grit. With the cabinet sanded, I grab my plunge router and add a chamfer to all the edges. With assembly and sanding complete, we're ready to start finishing. Since this is pine, I apply a pre-stain conditioner to help the stain take evenly to the wood. After allowing the pre-stain conditioner to dry, I apply a dark walnut stain to the cabinet, wiping off any excess after 15 minutes. I let the stain dry overnight, then came back and applied three coats of a wipe-on poly while wet sanding with 1000 grit between each coat. With both the cabinet and base finished, all that's left to do is connect them. To do this, I placed two scrap 2x4s on the bottom of the cabinet to act as spacers for the base. 
It was at this moment I realized I made an error somewhere and my base was too tall. I'll talk a little more about this at the end of the video as well as what I had to do to fix it. After correcting the base, I lined it up with the cabinet using a square, then pre-drilled my holes using a self-centering bit. To attach the screws, I used a flexible driver attachment which makes it much easier to work in tight areas that your driller driver may not fit. Here it is, a DIY industrial media console that you can build using basic materials from your local home center. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap this one up. So thank you again for watching. And if you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on future projects. Now, before I send it off, I want to talk about a few issues that I ran into while building this console. These might be issues that you've experienced on past projects or things that you're currently dealing with. And while this video may make it seem like this project was entirely smooth sailing, that's not entirely true. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some of these issues a little further. Now probably the first and biggest issue I came across during this project were my panels cupping. Now prior to starting the build, I actually let the boards sit in my shop for about a week to acclimate. And then when it was time to mill them, I actually spread that out over a couple days to allow any internal stresses to release. After the boards had been milled to their final size, I went ahead and started gluing them up into each individual panel. While I was clamping everything down, I made sure to use calls to keep everything flat and then went back and checked everything with a level to make sure that there was no uneven clamping pressure inadvertently causing this cup. Once I verified everything was good to go, I went ahead and let it sit for at least a day to let the glue dry. After coming back the next day, I noticed that almost all the panels had some sort of cup in them, even though when I originally clamped them together, they were flat. So I did some research online and I came to the conclusion that maybe the fence on my joiner isn't exactly 90 degrees. So what I ended up doing was I marked the opposite face on each board that would be glued together on the panel. Then I would take each one of those boards and run them back over the joiner to get a straight edge, making sure to use that face I marked as the reference face up against that fence. This way, whenever I put those boards back together to be glued up, any variance in the angle will be mirrored by the next board connecting to it, thus creating a perfect glue joint. And while this did show some improvement, I still had some cupping on the panels once I removed them from the clamps the next day. This caused a pretty big issue when I was trying to assemble the console. I wanted the console to be fully assembled with reinforced miters. Now when I tried to put these miter joints together, there was almost a quarter of an inch gap in the center of each joint. Now this was just too much of a gap for me to be able to squeeze out with clamps. So I ended up just having to cut my losses and remove the miters and just move forward with standard butt joints. Now the second issue I ran into was glue squeeze out and finishing. So this is kind of related to the cupped panels. When I went to add in the dividers, the shelf didn't really want to fully contact in the center. This was because there was a slight cup in the shelf. Even though I added calls and applied as much clamping pressure as I could, I still wasn't able to fully get that gap closed. So I had to come back later with some glue and sawdust to try to fill in those gaps and then sand it down smooth. Originally, I had thought I had fully sanded it down. However, when I went to go apply finish, there were some spots where the finish just would not take at all. So I'd have really dark areas and some spots that just looked like it hadn't even been touched. So I had to go back and re-sand these down and then just keep trying to see if the stain would take. Ultimately, I was able to get most of the parts stained. However, it's not entirely easy. Now the third issue I ran into was assembling the base. Even if I have a set of plans prior to the build and I know exactly what all my dimensions should be, when it comes to using pipe, those dimensions are never exact. There's always some form of variance in that because you can never really tell how far you're gonna be able to thread the pipe into each fitting until you actually start assembling it. Now in relation to this console, I had slightly miscalculated the height for the legs and in addition to that, we still had that slight variance of how far each pipe is threading into each fitting. All of that combined, it added up to be a few inches taller than what I had wanted. So I actually had to go back and cut the legs down to the appropriate height and re-thread each one of those ends. Now when I re-threaded that, that marred up my paint and my finished surface. So I had to go back and sand it down and then repaint the whole base again. So that added about an extra day of work when I originally started that day thinking that all I had to do was screw this base on and I was done. So next time you come across an issue, rather than feeling down or discouraged, ask yourself, what can I do to solve this problem? And what can I learn from this situation? I want to say thank you to those who stuck around so far. 
As always, I love hearing from you guys, so go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of the build. But also, let me know of a time that you've run into an issue or an obstacle and what you've done to overcome that. That's all I've got for today, so until then, I'll catch you on the next one, guys.